Welcome everyone to episode five one of the A Travel Talk Show, brought to you by the A Canada Marketing Group. The A Travel Talk Show is beamed down to us live from our very own Cobro satellite. <laughs> Just recently launched Just uh, recently last launched. week. Yeah. <laughs> Every Tuesday, 7 p.m. PST from our base camp somewhere is here in beautiful Maple Leaf Country, Canada. Tonight, our special guest is an international horsemanship clinician, educator, Mr. Glenn Stewart. Here at the A Canada headquarters, his code name is in our A Canada speak, I guess you call it, the cowboy who specializes in horsemanology. Horseman, hey, that's a good one. Doesn't that flow? That, that's yeah, it sounds yeah. real. Horsemanology. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> and if you want to use that, anyone, you can go right ahead. Glenn Stewart, our guest, Mr. Cowboy, uh, has been working with horses and their owners for over 40 years, Colin. And he doesn't yeah. just do it in Canada, he's been doing it all around the world, teaching thousands of students and probably tens of thousands of horses his horse development program. In fact, for you horse loving gurus out there. In fact, Glenn Stewart just completed. We just had a, a nice little chance to talk with him in, in the green room there. He completed his education summit where he interviewed 10 different uh, horse people, counting from manufacturers, trainers, and so forth within his circle influence. So I'm sure, Colin, that uh, yes. Mr. Glenn here, he's gonna give, it, give us some uh, giddy up and go insider information on how his multi-day summit went he is not horsing around dude when it comes to training horses that's pretty good eh? you see all that horse work going on in that talk man all that horseology stuff I, I, i'm speechless i don't know what to say it's, yeah. it's yeah. oh yeah it's so impressive thanks 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 so mm. sounds like he's think, got a like he's got a great career i mean it's pretty amazing well, I think nice thing about uh, with Glenn too is he's one of those people that is doing what he loves to do. Oh, for sure. I mean, he's, yeah. You can see the passion just talking to him earlier about it, and um, I mean, he, he's got the love it, the life he loves, and uh, doing it well. Yeah, I kudos, mean, kudos. In, in a lot of ways, he's like uh, Junior and I doing what you love best, uh, except he's got a 160 acre horse farm. Oh yeah, yeah. I'd love this a little more with 160 acres in my backyard. Yeah, for sure. yeah, yeah. Oh, so, uh, yeah, it's all good. So maybe Glenn's going to share with us some of his horse whispering techniques tonight. I'm hoping he does. And uh, in our Canadian speak, we're going to get a little bit of a uh, horsemanology of a teaching tonight. Horsemanology 101, if you want to call it. Anywho, Glenn will be joining us hopefully in about five ten minutes. But first. We're going to do our duty to the Canadian public. If you've been living in a cave, and if you ever did miss it, we're going to tell you right now what you've been missing. Mm. We had some great news last week. Bro and I were just recognized as a top 100 power influencer by Global Power. Ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, that is pretty cool. So let me get this straight. Let's just... just, just Figure this out, Junior. I'm going to take my uh, my grade seven math and I'm going to put it to a test here. In the mm -hmm. first three months of 2020, we won two best marketing program awards for our small and rural community marketing and empowerment program. We won a best mm -hmm. adventure website and best Canadian planning mm -hmm. website award for acantravel.com. We were recognized. We were recognized, ranked 23rd, the top 1,000 global travel bloggers by Global Rise. And why can't I get? Ah! Ah, didn't miss a thing. No, we didn't miss Colin Hell this thing, and uh, we sort of got bumped <laughs> off by the internet. And welcome to Trap live. Well, welcome to live TV Canadian stuff. So uh, I think we were letting we were uh, counting off our five awards. Uh, which is actually six awards, six awards oh, and accolades we, we in the first that. three months of 2021. <laughs> uh, that's six awards and accolades in the first three months of 2021. Uh, that's six awards and oh, sorry, broken record there. That's uh, more than one hand, man. Not too shabby. We're on to the not too shabby for we're two bros in the know, eh, Junior? That's impressive. I uh, you'll take all of them 
them for uh, warning us. Um, we yep. worked hard, and uh, we're going to keep going. And you know we're what? into the second half of the century, first century of shows, 51. There you go. We're at the 50. We're a big 5-1. So, yeah. uh, again, just so you know, Internet's a bit sketchy tonight. We're going to try mm. and pull this off. We're going to try and do our best to pull this off for you, our loyal viewers. Uh, I hope we didn't lose too many of you, but we're back on the show, and here we are live from beautiful backcountry Canada. My name is... <sighs> Greg Gerard, I am the Cobro founder of the award-winning website, acanchild.com, and Cobro owner of Acanta Marketing Group. We own and write for the award-winning blog called Two Brothers, Two Feet, Two Curious, Two Canadian. And we are your Cobro hosts of the A Travel Talk Show. So let's do us all a favor and let's hear from my fellow tourism whisperer, Mr. Junior Colin. Gerard. Ah, thank you. Thank you. I am the co-founder of A Canada Travel, and I'm also the co-brost, you know, co-brost there. Uh, uh, that's pretty the good. The A Travel talk show, the co-broner of A Canada Travel, and the co-brogger. Co-brogger. Wow. Brogger. Brogger. That, 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 that would be, that would be a blog and brother, if I'm correctly assuming yes. you're, a, you're A Canada speak. Say I'm a co-brost of the A Travel Talk Show, I, I which know. is a for brother and host. I guess we gotta spell it out some here. Well, not everyone talks A Canada, dude. <laughs> and uh, keeper of the code, happy to be here, and uh, thank you all for joining us. Yes. So together we are the brothers of tourism, and this is our tourism and travel Facebook Live show called A Travel Talk show proudly made with 100 percent canadian on. ingredients we are a home of canadian foods like bannet poutine beaver tails and of course atlantic lobster and home to some wicked canadian adventures which and beverages that we wish you all to try like the sour toe cocktail mm -hmm. of the yukon newfoundland screech gimli Mount manitoba whiskey and canadian ice wine we go for it try out our beverages in our beverage and wine tourism industry so and seeing how not many of us can go out to restaurants or bars or anything at this moment, I'd suggest you try it. Yes, sir. Bob Colin. Guess what? This show's live, as you already, already, <clears throat> all of you already know the show is live. Because hey, is this show live? Yeah, because we've already been <laughs> bumped out once and uh the internet's a little bit sketchy right now. So yeah. we're 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 gonna struggle. We're gonna punch our way through this show. And uh, we're going to give you, as always, a quality appearance uh, on our live show. But just if you're just joining us now, because we know how you the latecomers like to join us, uh, stuff happens here. It's a live show. We get kicked out. Our guests get mm -hmm. kicked out. Sometimes they can't come back. Some, but we always come back because we, we have the Internet capability. But do not freak out. If we don't, and if it takes a while, we'll log back in and we will be here. Just sit back relax and we will be right back but do not do not do not do not change the channel wait for us we'll be back this is live show internet sketchy and that's the way it works here in the beautiful internet world of canuck land right it's a good time to go get some chips and dip and refresh your beverage uh exactly it is a great time to chip and dip and refresh your beverages but i don't right? know about people freaking out i mean i think i mean we won some awards but i think you're going a little a little going to your head there i don't know man you just, like, you, you, just you just continue you don't be daring yeah, don't just, try just and, calm don't, down people don't try and, <laughs> don't try and start a fight just calm down we'll be so back. tonight tonight we talk horsemanship with glenn stewart You've met Glenn A. Call, pretty cool guy. I have met Glenn the Cowboy, and he's a very cool guy. Yep. As you know there, Junior, Canada is a very Western cowboy and cowgirl country of many parts of our land. We saw that when we were crossing the country for 10 years. We saw a lot of country and Western type living, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. I mean, driving by the ranches and the horses and the scenery and the deer and Mm -hmm. Country living is pretty, pretty, pretty sweet. Yes, it is. So we saw like a whack of cowboy hats, a whack of horses, and we listened to a whack of country music stations. Yes, 
That's all they had actually for a while there. <laughs> <laughs> Some yep. places that's that's all you get is country, but that's fine too. But uh it's definitely turned you into a lover of country and Yep. You know, it was it's not better than when you're driving on the road trip down the windy uh -huh. road in the middle, whether you're riding a horse or driving a maple leaf RV. I was two stepping the whole way through. Yes. Right. So hey. Yeah. So uh, a couple things about this uh, horse tourism industry, it's quite large and, and people should know that how much uh, of an economic benefit it is to our country. Uh, Equine Canada once said, and they came out with some statistics, so get this call, the horse industry contributes more than one, 19 billion annually to the Canadian economy. Wow. I, Huge. That was, that's a B. <laughs> Huge. Yeah. As in bro? Yeah, as in bro. It's bro, <laughs> bro billion annually to the Canadian economy. The Canadian horse industry supports more than 154,000 jobs. That's huge, right? Yeah. And get this, for one, every every job that the horse uh, tourism industry and horse training industry and the horse industry in general generates, there are 6.25 horses in Canada. I, I'm not exactly sure where the 2.5 horse comes from. I haven't really seen one of those where it's only mm. 0.25 of a horse, but you know, they're out there. <laughs> maybe it's those uh pony is considered a portion or something maybe maybe, maybe the ministry yeah the ministry of heritage sport tourism and culture tells us this in 2007 just under 1 million adult canadians went horseback riding well and in an out of town overnight trip for one or more nights that's pretty cool so why just under 1 million when they were going on a trip they went and supported our horse guiding horseback backing cattle drives guest ranch type of industry within our horse industry. I thought that was a pretty impressive number. Well, horseback riding is so cool. I yeah. mean, who doesn't want to go out and do that for a, a weekend or, I mean, I can remember going to, I don't remember the name of the ranch. Yeah. I remember doing that, the couch and Valley there, the, the dude ranch, whatever, going out horseback riding. I mean, that was mm -hmm. memories do uh, that stick with you. I got bucked off the horse and uh, I ran into the horn of the saddle with uh, my, my special protective parts. I can remember uh, yeah, yeah, having a little bit of a rough start there. Well, but my, we grew up on a farm there for I know. Well, certain that's years. The reason why that happened is there was a log and the horse stopped right in front of it and didn't want to go over it. Uh -huh. And yeah. I, I didn't stop with the horse. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. I still love it though. I think it's a beautiful way to see the country, beautiful way to get out there. And what better way? I mean, it's way better than taking a gas powered equipment is take out a horse. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And they're such amazing creatures. Yeah. I mean, probably the most beautiful domesticated animal in, uh, that I can think of. In I Canada, totally anyway. So, uh, horseback riders, this is really cool. So they, they sort of survey 21 outdoor activities, I guess the, the top 21. So you're looking at mountain biking, fishing, all that sort of thing, right? ATV, backpacking, camping. Uh, horseback riders were the second out of that list of 21 outdoor activity types call that wow. have taken a trip to an adjacent province or region. So horseback riders, they love checking out other parts of the country on a horse. Yes. So that's valuable. That's valuable information. That's the way that's that's information. If you are a horse guiding company or you do run a cattle drive or you are on a guest ranch, that's huge. That's telling you that there's 61% of people that are uh, that are looking at horseback riding in Canada aren't from your province. That is huge because it makes the market out there is uh, it doesn't matter where you are if you mm -hmm. got the ranch. Yeah. And I mean that's what a great way to see the country. Yep. So, go, yeah, go ahead. go ahead. So horsing around, I guess, basically there, Junior, uh, horsing around is what, a popular activity? Is that what you're saying? Am I depressing <laughs> you or what? Uh, well, I'm still uh, getting the horsing around there. You know, you caught me off guard there. And, uh, yeah, it's a very popular activity, I find. Who doesn't? Um, most people I know like to go horseback riding. Yep. Well, look at all the jobs and the revenues it generates for communities and regions. I mean, yeah. people, you know, they might not see the horse ranch because it's, a lot of them are out of town. There might be 10, 20 kilometers out of town, but they're a major contributor. They need somewhere to sleep. They need somewhere to eat. They need somewhere to maybe have uh, nighttime entertainment, um, all of that stuff. So all, there's a whole bunch of residual effects that come off the horse, uh, the horseback riding, horse training, cattle drive, guest ranch industry. 
And what a great thing to bring your family to. I mean, your kids get them out there and you know meet a horse, ride a horse. I mean, that's mind blowing if you're if you've never done that before as a child. Ah, uh, yeah, I totally agree. As a kid, I totally agree. So uh, our guest Glenn Stewart uh, should know a thing or two. You think a call about some of these uh, trending horse tourism numbers, trend training numbers, guest ranch, cattle drives? You think he would be the man that we could? Uh, pose our challenging questions to i think he could probably rise up to the task yeah he seems like he knows a little bit about the uh horseman trade yep okay so let me tell you a little bit about our guests and uh we're hoping uh because glenn is in the big wild wild west in the back country of fort st john way out on a big horse training facility equestrian summit ranch and internet might be a little spotty so we lost Glenn, and we've been just putting on a show and hoping he's going to pop <laughs> back in. He's, so, he's not back yet. He's not back yet. But we're going we're gonna to continue with this introduction, and then we're going to play it by ear. So uh, <laughs> our, our friend here, Mr. Glenn Stewart, Mr. Cowboy, uh, head of uh, horsemanology at his ranch. Glenn is an international horsemanship clinician and educator. He has been working with horses and their owners for over 40 years, teaching thousands of students his horse development program. This guy is a big wig within the horse uh, the horse training industry, so I'm hoping that uh, a lot of the skills and techniques and tips that uh, he applies in his horse development program will be able to talk to him about it. He has combined his skills to offer several horse-related initiatives and innovative horse training techniques, they're called. And, um, and before COVID, uh, before COVID, he was traveling extensively each year, delivering horsemanship clinics across Canada, the United States, in South America and Europe. And uh, and that's where we're sort of at right now. And there he is. He's coming in. So currently, just as we're introducing our friend Glenn Stewart, <laughs> he's coming into our show. He's in the green room. He's looking good. His timing's impeccable. I oh, mean, yeah. Impe I mean, that, is that a horsemanship trait or something or what? His timing does have that sixth sense. Yeah, I mean, he, he's he can talk to horses, so I mean, he's got to have that you know sixth sense there, uh, mind mind meld thing. Well, if that's that horse whispering, uh, that trick they got where they're you know they're talking horse here, yeah, yeah, right? That's what they do, they talk horse, and then uh, and then we all look at him and go, What's going on? But then this horse is performing these wonderful tricks and he's behaving well. and all these good little little things and i guess that's what happens when you teach horsemanology 101. Hmm. Right? i got nothing to say you don't you don't <laughs> no no you don't, no more horsing around right. Colin. yeah yeah bring glenn on please no. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, there you go so let me just to finish off our introduction and again great timing there glenn no. uh, and again currently he lives on his ranch there in Fort St. John, uh, BC County, he travels the world uh, with his horse development program. And tonight, that is where we are fortunate enough to catch up to Mr. Glenn Stewart. Hello there, hey. sir. Hi guys, how's it going? Good, what? good. Well, I thought I was, I thought I was in on this whole thing. I was listening to you guys. I didn't know I disappeared. <laughs> I didn't know I was beyond there. So. You <laughs> start talking. Well, yeah, I saw. I thought, well, it's a good thing you mentioned something because I was just sitting here waiting. I was watching and listening to you guys. <laughs> Kevin, like you know, five minutes left in the show. There, uh, when are they going to bring me on? <laughs> well, that's good. That's because awesome. That's good, Glad, because one of us was going to play your part. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you guys were doing great. I was totally enjoying it. I was just sitting here relaxing. Okay. So, Claire, we got we're, we got a lot of questions to ask you uh, because you have such a distinguished career and uh, you are a leader within the, the horsemanship and uh, clinician and education and the equine equestrian field. I can't say that five times fast. So let's get to this questions right away there, Glenn. Um, maybe, Glenn, uh, we, we've given sort of a little uh, resume of uh, the wonderfulness work you do with horses and with training and with people who own horses. Maybe you could fill us a little bit, uh, our viewers in a little bit more about who is Glenn Stewart. Sure. Um, before we get into that, I'm, I'll just make a brief one. But before we get into that, I was listening to you guys saying you didn't know where the, two, the 0.25 come from. Yeah. And uh, you guys have heard of quarter horses? 
<laughs> that's okay. That's a good one. Yeah, that, right is on. Is that real or are you yeah. pulling your leg? What's yeah. it? I might be a pulling my leg. Horse that, a that's quarter horse. Quarter horse. Quarter horse. How come we yeah. didn't think of that? Call it when we were designing. I this don't know. Show. I I was waiting for one to come up with that. That's that's well. You got to be a little bit of a horse person to come up with that that quick. Very good, Mr. Glenn Stewart. Yeah, that's perfect. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. So okay. So yeah. I'm as you said. I live up near Fort St. John. I'm out in the country here. I've got what we call the horse ranch, and it is uh, nothing but horses. That's all I've been doing here for 20 years is is uh, horse stuff and having people come and go with uh, with their horses and people from all over the world come here and and learn horsemanship. I live right on the banks of uh, the Beaten River, and so that's my backyard. I got a whole bunch of wild country right out the back door here, and we're only 20 minutes from town, but we're tucked away at the end of the road, so um, we're uh, quite comfortable out here, nice and quiet. I got deer over my left shoulder, and I got some bulls in the field over my right shoulder, and they're balling away over there, and that's kind of where I'm at. I got you. quite comfortable. So, sounds like a pretty sweet uh, setup. Wow. So where was this? Uh, where was this ranch? And what horsemen and life lessons? You know, actually, hold. Let's re let's regress a bit for a bit. Let's. The backstory, when I was reading your social media and your website and articles I could find about uh, Glenn Stewart, uh, your backstory is amazing of how you got to where you are. I mean, the whole process of the, the steps you took to get to where you are are quite amazing. So you grew up on a cattle ranch, and then you started to go on these uh, backcountry horse training expeditions uh, we were talking about earlier. Maybe you can... Um, Maybe if you don't mind, give us a little bit of background on, on some of the lessons you learned through that cattle ranch and going into the back country and working with wild horses and some of the life lessons there while you were growing up and maybe give us a little insight of, uh, I, I think you're, you're, from what I'm gathering, your history is a big part of who Glenn Stewart is today. So maybe share a bit with us. Sure. Um, so yes, I did uh, just down the road from where I live. Uh, now my parents live and and we had cattle there so i grew up in the cattle ranch so we had cow calf operation or whatever and so we calved out cows and stuff and raised cattle and whatnot and i this river valley that i just spoke of it's not very far from from their place either so i used to as a kid take off whenever i could with my horse and ride north and hit that river valley and disappear for the day and yeah, i was probably 12 or 13 years old somewhere in that neck of the woods when i would be down there maybe younger mm -hmm. um i can't i don't know what age i was on but we'd go down in that valley and just be gone for for the whole day and and they never seemed to be concerned about whether what was going to happen down there and i was swimming the rivers on horses and we'd take a 22 wow. and lose a 22 down it'd fall off off the horse we'd lose that in the river and we didn't know nothing about river crossing or there was i remember getting yep. stuck down there in the river or on the bank one time we rode right out into some mud on the on the bank like it looked you know we thought oh the, the hill had slid and we rode on onto the slide the kids we didn't know buried a horse there and spent a few hours digging them out and then we rode into the into the beach and into the water and some places you can get away with that some places you can't some places you'll bury a horse there so we learned about that too don't go be careful where you're riding into the river if they're not it looks like a nice sandy beach and it is a nice sandy beach but not one you should be riding a horse on yeah so we did all kinds of things as a kid and then uh, uh uh in school they always said to me what do you want to do you know what do you want to go to college for what do you want to do when you get older and and um and i thought well the only thing i want to do is be outdoors and do something with horses and the um uh, mm -hmm. so there was nothing being offered in college or university like that and i didn't really want to go to school again anyways i was like i want to get out and do something so um yeah. so i it ended up getting a job with an outfitter big game outfitter and so at 17 went into the mountains with a big game outfitter uh it was actually my great uncle and uh he was uh he was from that the old school like fantastic guy he he would say uh you know, he, he lived by the rule, the strong will survive and, and okay. uh, you know, we're the, let's get it done. And, and, 
he kind of like give you a job the old school type of guys they give you a job but they wouldn't tell you how to do the job you've never done the job before you've never seen anybody do the job before but he'd give you the job to do and then walk away um he <laughs> when i first went up there at 17 i'd never been into the mountains where this is 160 kilometers from the nearest road and um there's no power no roads no nothing in there we're just wild country right in the middle of the mountains and the horses all run loose in that country and uh he would say okay we need to round up the horses for the fall we had to go find them the horses live there all year round they just get turned loose and they get used two to three months of the year and then they get turned loose for 10 or nine or ten months you don't see them and then you gotta go find them wherever they are and so he says go go find the horses and he say um go find horses you know go round up some horses and bring them in and he says and if you don't have horses in front of you don't come back and I don't want to see you," he said. "Unless you've got yeah. horses with you, you can't just go ride around the mountains and come back at night." Yep. And he's yep. got horses. And I thought, like, "Geez, I never done that before." Like these are, he's, I got to find them first in the middle of nowhere. Then I got to chase them in, and they don't just come. They don't just go, "Oh hi," and come running into the corral. You're, yeah. You know, I didn't know any of that. I didn't know that they weren't going to just go high. I thought, well, if I find them, that's going to be the biggest job. It was not the biggest job. Finding them was <laughs> small potatoes to get them into the, you know, trying to bring them in, running through the mountains. Uh, many times we would go down one mountain and back up another one to the peak and down off of that one and back and through a valley and back to the top. And uh, you couldn't get around them because of the windfall. You just had to follow them and your saddle horse wouldn't stop or turn. No he would just run with the other horses. So you're just hanging on for dear life, but you couldn't. If you could turn, there's too much brush, but he wouldn't really hardly turn anyways because they weren't broke good enough, but they would run full tilt to keep up with the herd. So you're trying to learn all this because there's nobody there giving you a course on it. You don't get to sit down yeah. and have a visit about it first. <laughs> it was wow. like a whole cool deal where you get going, get the horses, bring them in, and don't come back, sleep under a tree. I don't want to see you unless you got horses with you. So I was way more scared of my uncle than I was – of uh, <laughs> galloping down the side of a <laughs> so, yeah so you did what it took to bring horses in and then you slowly learned learned the ropes of what you had to do there and that that was uh like i say at 17 and yeah you would uh when i first got there he gave us uh there was me and a 13 year old and the 13 year old had way more um uh he, he, he experience than i did so at 13 so he, he'd been up there, he had more experience than i did so he would we were supposed to go bring a bunch of logs in to make a snake fence and that's like where you overlap the things like this and mm -hmm. you go like this and you go all around the pasture with the snake fence so we had to go cut the logs down and, and limb them and then load them onto a wagon and then have a team of horses and bring the, the logs in and make the fence and do that all day long and um uh so I'd never drove a team. I'd never harnessed a team. I'd never hooked one up to a wagon. I never drove a team. <laughs> and so you just get them harnessed. There's the two horses that you need to use. There's the wagon. The harness is in the thing. Get them harnessed up. So me and this 13-year-old, we we somehow got the harness, horses harnessed up. Probably everything was completely wrong, I'm sure. And uh, we'd go out and haul a bunch of trees and limb the trees, and then we'd load them all on the log, and we'd sit up on top of the pile of logs and come into where this crowd or this pasture needed to be built, and we'd start making the snake fest and drive ahead and put up some more logs and drive ahead and, and that's what we did for that was the first one of the first jobs i had when i went in there at 17 there was just me and that uh 13 year old in there that was our first job and um i remember one day he's it was pouring rain so we thought um well we'll just do some stuff we'll clean the tack shed up or do some things in the tack room so we we're stalling out going out in the rain and he yeah, come yeah. down to the tack room looked at the door and said uh what are you guys doing? And we said, well, you know, it's raining. And, and we thought we, he said, well, you made a sugar? Get your ass! <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we fly out the door. And so he, he laid it out very clearly how things worked. Um, another guy uh, come up to the mountains and uh, – we were all getting picked up to get flown into the mountains and so we're sitting on the airstrip we're waiting on a dirt airstrip along the alaska highway we're sitting there in the trees and uh, just these little bush planes would pull in and, and land on this skinny little airstrip so we're sitting there and there's me another guy that had been there before and a new guy 
And so we're all sitting there visiting and then the plane lands and my uncle jumps out and he says, he's always nine, you know, just nine. Oh, he's just, he's a big, big man. And he was just striding out, just big, long strides. And he just comes <laughs> out of his plane flying down. Says, oh, grab your gear boys. And so we grabbed our stuff and we're heading for the plane. And he grabbed the new guy's backpack and a book fell out. Oh, yeah. And uh, on the thing, I was, Oh, Hey Gary, a book fell out of that backpack. And he goes, um, throw it in the bush. And I said, well, it's not my book. I don't care whose book it is. We're up here to work, not read books. And the new guy, got very, clear, very clear what was going on. So you, you, I, I don't think I've seen that since in all my life. I don't think I've ever seen that since. And, and I tell some of these stories. I could go on and on all night about stories of what went on. But um, people, you know, people ask me, they go, well, why didn't you quit? Why didn't you do this? Many? Are you kidding me? I would never quit that deal. It was the ultimate best experience of my life he he you get to find out who you really were because he did he's not going to hold yeah. your hand he's not going to walk around you either make it or you won't you know it was yeah. it was the best thing ever yeah well one of the things uh i came across is uh you called this experience uh life's biggest learning curve is that pretty much sum it up yeah that absolutely yeah. was my the biggest and the best learning curve I've ever had because he, uh, me and that that thirteen year old, we had to trail horses to the highway that that same year. So we had we had to take some horses out to the highway, and we have to cross, um, what was it, two two rivers to get out with the horses, and we had to take two stallions that just did whatever they wanted. We couldn't hardly control them, and then we had thirteen horses between the uh, us and thirteen horses. So. And we'd never seen the trail. We don't know the trail. We're, there's no roads. There's not, okay. there's not a nice sign here pointing you left. Uh, we're just riding through the bush. And he, so he said, I need these horses taken to the highway. I want you guys to take them. So again, the 13 year old had more experience. So he was in the front and I was in the back. We had all those horses loose in the middle and we started trailing out. And But uh, lucky for us, he drew a map before we left. So it was a four day trip to the highway, he drew a map on, you know, those, in the restaurants not that we ever get to see a restaurant ever again but in a restaurant you know the little napkins that you pull out of the napkin the old silver oh napkins yeah yeah have. yeah so he had one of those and he scratched some That's lines on it and he said there's your map for four days to go through the mountains uh, 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 wow. good good luck right yeah we had to cross yeah. rivers and so um so we head out on this trip and you know i'm thinking well sh do we need a pack should we take a pack horse you know put our, our bed rolls in and some food and all that stuff and he goes no no you don't get no back horse he said whatever you can put in your saddlebag <laughs> is what you can have for food and you can tie your rain gear on the back of your saddle but you're not taking bed rolls and all that stuff he said you got a lot of country to cover and a lot of miles to go and and i said well where do you stay at night he said wherever you want there's just pull up under a tree and and yep. camp for the night so yeah. uh, unreal. I'd never done unreal. It. Yeah. Uh, so me and a 13 year old going all, so we'd go up and we, we'd get to the end of the day. We didn't know if we're going fast or slow. You know, we're, we know nothing about it. We didn't know if we were covering a lot of country yeah. or we're way behind or we didn't know yeah. if we we're on the right trail and we get to somewhere yeah. and we go, it's getting dark. It's in the uh, end of October. So there's snow and they're starting to freeze up on the creeks and the rivers and stuff. And, so we just pull up where we found a big spruce tree and go, well, let's just stay under that spruce tree. And uh, so that's what we do. We'd stay under this, yep. we'd sleep under the spruce tree. And, uh, and you know, in the movies and stuff, and people probably think it's romantic to to uh, cowboy stuff to sleep under, your, you know, with your, you sleep in your saddle. You actually, you lay your, your sheepskins up and you lay in that on your back because it keeps your back a little bit warmer. And then, uh, you kind of squished into your saddle and then you take your wet stinking saddle blankets and you lay them on top of you and you have the fire going uh -huh. and you, you, that's how you try to sleep, but you don't. You go from 160 kilometers in the back country, herding wild horses at a tender age of, of 17 ish. And then you go and you go yeah. and now you're doing, you're traveling the world with your heroes development program, including United States, South America and Europe. And uh, you take people out on these Costa Rican uh, horse touring packages. You have your your training sessions, your private and group training sessions. You got a lot going on. So maybe what we can 
maybe segue into here, Glenn, is maybe if you could share with us some of these worldly adventures and training sessions that you've been involved with in and uh, what, what is covered, what is covered in your, in these training sessions that have taken you all around the world. Sure. So, um, so because of what that thing in the mountains did for me and, 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 you know, the stuff I learned from it, not, not necessarily horsemanship wise, but just the adventure of it all. And, uh, you know, you got to dig pretty deep at times, you know, and, and you're, you know, that, that trip just goes on and on with more stories that I won't tell you about, but, um, <laughs> you learn all these things that you're a lot tougher than you think you are. And I, and so to begin with, I started saying, you know what, I need to offer this trip to people and take them because most people will never do anything remotely like this. So we, the tri so I, I thought, well, I can't do what, what we did. It's too tough. It's too much. Like you can't expect, like even that trip, I wouldn't give two 40 year old adults that trip. They'd have to be really well versed with horses to give them that trip and not worry about them drowning in the river or freezing yeah. to death or getting lost or something you know, or trampled by a horse or, but, my uncle's a different dude there, which I, like yep. I said, I love it. Anyway, the stuff that I got from that, I thought I want to take, I want to open that to people. And so I'll take them. I'm going to explain to them how to do things. I will be the guy that jumps in and does all the, the more dangerous or tough stuff, but they can have a learning holiday adventure out of this. So I can bring people in from wherever they want to come from across Canada or the United States, anywhere in the world. So people from all over the world and all over Canada come there and, and I take them up on that trip. So we're going up in July to go do that um, trip again. And I've been doing it for 18 years. Um, wow. With an Brilliant. Uh, uh, and, and looking after developing the herd and everything. So the students come up. So like I said, it's a learning holiday adventure. So you, you, you I don't know if you're, if you're blind and deaf, you'd still have to learn something. There's just no way that you couldn't learn something just for the yeah. environment that you're in. And then the, the adventure, well, that's just around every tree. And then you get the holiday because we have a big old hot tub up there and we got a cook that cooks for you. And we've got the refreshments in the creek. And yeah. um, But there's no cell phones. There's no none of that stuff. So we're going up to another, a new place this summer to do the same thing. So I started, I did that and I go, cause I've done it forever and, and knew the ins and outs of it now at this age. You know, I can, uh, that's all I did it a hundred days of the year. I did that trip. So I thought, well, I can take people in and show them that. But then as time went on and my horsemanship grew and I learned more, um, then I started getting requests to go to Brazil and, you know, and to Costa Rica and to, uh, Europe and stuff to do clinics and do competitions and do shows and stuff like that. So nice. then I started touring these other countries. So now uh, they said, well, you know, I, I said, you know, with the people or the, uh, the places that I went to, I said, well, man, I got to show, I got to show people this too. This is, you know, yeah. we're getting, we're getting to rant, get into places that you would never see. They're 10 foot high uh, walled in ranches. You can't get behind that gate, you know, but yeah. if you know somebody, you can't. Yeah. So I started doing these these trips abroad, <clears throat> and so people would come here to do the Canadian trips, and then also we'd take people over there to do the trips, and it all actually come from the horsemanship. So I was only ever focused on my horsemanship. That's the only thing I've ever – like I would just – I never planned any of these things. It wasn't a goal. I didn't go, okay, one day I want to be this, one, two days I want to do that, yeah. which if, probably if I made a goal, I might have been even doing more than I'm doing. But I just kind of said, well, I'm just focused on trying to get good with horses. That's all I'm focused on. And the doors mm -hmm. started flying open and uh, all these adventures, the Brazil and the Costa Rica and the Vienna and tour all, nice. tour all around. Go see the Lipizzans and, and where the Lipizzans are bred and where they're pastured in the summertime and go to Brazil and ride um, wow. loose horses. And um, yeah. yeah, so it just kind of exploded into a whole bunch what of different a, you know, this is one of the things so, we said. This is what. Oh, go ahead, call. Is it blowing your mind? <laughs> it totally like the blew way my your mind. Life has turned out like it's. Well, I could have never guessed it. I could never guessed it. And like I said, first of all, I didn't know it was possible. Like I didn't know that there was ranches like that in in Brazil and all these places in Vienna. I didn't know that there were some of the places that I've seen in in uh, in Brazil. They've got man-made caves with a creek running through them. And they've got waterfalls and chandeliers and oh my creeks that back and forth through the stairs wow. with light shining through the water. And you look down at the bottom and there's a, a water fountain there and you're looking down at the roof of the indoor arena and they've got a, a, 
a pool to swim the horses in. It's an outdoor pool. And oh my and god, more shit. Yeah, and there's wow. a there's a, a a person that chef that sits there and he's cooking up stuff on the Dutch oven and they're serving drinks and. Um, wow. This all this this is all is all stuff that I've been to. So I end up going to these places first and seeing them because I get an invite of some sort from somebody. So I go there and I kind of check the water out, you know, see how things are. And I go, you know what? We can turn this into a, a learning holiday adventure and we can bring people from wherever mm -hmm. and let them experience some of this stuff. So this, um, the, the horseman training courses, and I'm trying, when I was, when I was again, looking at the stuff, trying to wrap my head on this, uh, there's a couple areas where you say it's taught in stages, which I thought was really cool. So there's sort of when in this horse development, there's sort of stages involved where you got to work through these stages. Um, maybe, and, and I hope this is okay. Maybe you can uh, share with us some of the stages of learning that you refer to when it comes to horsemanship. Sure. So the stages that I refer to is basically why I get to go to all these places. That this is the reason that, so these, there's somebody that owns all these places and, and some of these guys, the horses are with, or, you know, $120,000 horse or whatever. And there's lots of horses that are worth a lot more than that, but you know, it's a hundred, this one's 120,000, that one's 60,000, that one's 80,000. And so the reason I get to go there in the first place is because of what I refer to as the stages program. <clears throat> this is something that I follow with every horse and that doesn't matter if it's an English saddle on them. It doesn't matter if it's a Western saddle. It's in the Western or English thing. It's a, it's a, it's a horse thing. So uh, it's about working with horses, trying to understand horses and develop horses and stuff. And in the meantime, you're developing people. So uh -huh. you actually develop as a person as you go through the stages. <clears throat> so I call it the stages and I set it up so people can see that, yes, I'm moving, I'm moving, I'm moving, I'm getting better, I'm getting better. And and it's the it's the thing that I would follow with any horse. And if they call me to come to Brazil with some, I start going through, or I, I go through their, this, I follow these steps with the yeah. horses that are there and that and that keeps getting me called back to do more stuff and more stuff and that's why people come from all over the world is to learn this these steps that i follow with any horse it doesn't matter if i'm on a dressage saddle in brazil or in vienna or austria or something like that or if i'm in the mountains with pack horses and i'm riding up the side of a mountain <clears throat> or if i'm competing with some event at the calgary stampede these are all the things that i have done with that particular horse to the further i get up in the stages with that horse the better developed he is and every time i go through the stages again the better i get so i just okay. continually get better the more time the more horses that i use and the higher i go in it i just get better and um like i said doors open that i didn't know were closed i didn't even know there was a door to open and yeah. um it's been absolutely shocking um the things that have come from it you know if, just uh just a side note, I think these stages would help uh, me out tremendously in taming wild columns. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm well, telling there's you. No, there's you no taming. There's no breaking a, breaking yeah. a column. No. Yeah. I got to break this horse there, Glenn. <laughs> yeah. Mom, I got so, some technique. Uh, nah, yeah. Yeah. So with the horsemanship courses and the skills training uh, that assist, how, how would these – the skills training that you have that you specialize in that that your horsemanship programs how do you envision or have you got examples of where this this training process of of working with these horses how would that help say a horseback guiding company a guest ranch cattle drive adventure company uh multi-day horseback backing tours uh where do you see that connection Oh, all over the place. It's there. It's it's nonstop. So, um, so I've worked with actual carriage companies that give tours on carriage tours in Victoria. I've helped them okay. and helped them de design a program not only for the horses but for the people that are driving the horses. So I helped okay. them design mm -hmm. a program that they're put their people through. So that I've been up to the mountains and I've worked with their crew at the mountains and. You know, they ride horses 100 days a year and they take people out on trips. And so it's trail riding. Um, you know, it's kind of like a guest ranch, but not. It's a little wilder than guest ranches tend to be, this stuff. Yeah. Um, but I went there and developed the herd. So I, I, with my students now, so the students come on these learning holiday adventures and we develop the herd in the mountains. And we have a, a, a rated, 
uh, we have a I've designed a program where you rate the horses one to five and so as we train them they get moved up the state up not the stages they get moved up this rating program so the, okay. the outfitters or guest ranches or whoever it is there's an actual rating for the horse so they can say okay this horse is ready for guests or he's only good for um the guides he's not ready for guests yet or or this horse is as good a trail horse as it's going to get so we can put anybody on this horse so we've set up a system like that we've also got another numbering system so when you get up in these areas that i've been talking about they're 200 plus horses that are running loose that you see two to three months of the year so the guides they get confused about uh they they know what horse they're talking to like they so they might saddle up uh romeo and uh they thought it was old bob and two minutes later uh, they get bucked off because they so we have a numbering pro uh, system for the horses too so nobody gets confused about what horses what and they know the rate everybody can look at the rating program um so that's what we've done there that's been pretty very successful and we're about to go do it for another uh area this winter so um excellent uh, yeah be, there's not a lot of people that i've showed that to but uh the yeah. ones that i have it's been super successful yeah so to all our uh, anybody, uh, all yeah so to all our uh trail riding companies out there that uh that work with us on our acanatravel.com and to the cattle drive we've got a cattle drive company there in calgary uh you've just been introduced to a gentleman who is uh, very well known and be able to help you out if you do need to, to those services and again we've been putting up glenn's uh social media feeds all during the show his uh, email and his website so please uh get that pen and paper in that scratch pad if you don't have that just Get a knife and scratch it into your 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 dinner table there, and uh, and then you can get a hold of Glenn that way and have him around every time you have dinner. There will be Glenn Stewart right there on that table, <laughs> having dinner with you. So Glenn, um, there's a the, COVID has done a lot of things to the tourism industry. It's a, it's a, also uh, there's winners and losers, and uh, a lot of us have had to pivot. A lot of us had to change our playbooks um, and go that. So what? What is uh what is uh the Glenn Stewart uh horsemanship program and your and your learning tours? I love that name by the way, learning tours. What is mm. new and coming down the pipe uh in the future for for Glenn Stewart and his programs and how do you see it growing during and post COVID? How, uh, what are you envisioning for the the horse touring and the horsemanship program? Well, as you know there's you can you can get in touch with a lot of people just like what we're doing right here so but uh, the covid hit uh the clinicians the, the, you know what i do it hit us pretty hard like they shut down this shut down that our our competitions were shut down our shows were shut down everything was shut down and um so that was bad but what what we did was decided there's some things that we've been thinking about that we needed to do we should do but we never had time because we're going from one place to another another yep. doing stuff and it shut a whole bunch of stuff down so i said well i gotta learn about this kind of a deal so we started up an online lesson so we got the glenn stewart academy and people um i've got a whole bunch of people i don't know what was maybe six months into covid i had an online lesson program set up and we've got people from all over the world following the lesson Beautiful. program so they yeah they can do the stages at home they can follow the stages at home and then we've got a private facebook group which i had to learn all this private facebook group i'm doing private uh, you know facebook lives i'm doing zooms i had to learn all this stuff because <laughs> i just said i'm out I've got horses to ride i got people coming in the yard i gotta go here i gotta do and I learn all this stuff so yep. but it give me time and also said i have to i, I we're gonna so I, I actually spent way more money bought more I, I hired more people i i went in uh right up to my eyeballs when the money wasn't coming in i went into my eyeballs and poured more money into my business hoping that when this COVID ends we it'll it you know will come out smelling like a, like a rose i hope and in yep. the meantime get these online courses this that so people can do something at home that they don't you know People yep. can't go to the, the, do some of the things. We're not allowed to do a whole bunch of stuff. So now they can actually get to going at home, and they can do it all over anywhere in the world. Can can follow this program, and they can join the Facebook group. And I get on the Facebook group kind of like we're doing here, and I give little tips and talks and answer questions and stuff. So 
they can everybody can be doing something and even before covid you know you do a clinic with some people and they might not see you for six months or a year and you do another clinic and then six months or a year they another clinic and there is so much information in a four-day clinic or a three-day clinic or two-day clinic uh, my clinics are six hours long and you're you're busy for six hours everybody's in there everybody's going and I can ask them the next morning, do you guys remember what we did yesterday? Let's talk about that just to, as a refresher. And there could be 10, 15, 20 people in that group, and they cannot remember what I did on the first day. There's that much information. So yeah. now with this online course, they back up the clinics and they go, okay, here's here's the step-by-step -step process that Glenn would use with any horse anywhere yes. in the world. And this is what he's been teaching us in the clinic. And so that is what yeah. that's main, that's one of the main things that we've done. And and how do uh how do our horsemen followers and horse enthusiasts how do they they can go to the horse ranch dot com and sign up for these training online courses? Yeah, they can go to info at the horse ranch info at the horse ranch dot com, and uh, that's probably the best best way to go there. I mean, they can they can catch us too at Glenn Stewart uh, at the horse ranch dot com. But pretty much anything at thehorseranch.com, you're going to find us. But, uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, info at thehorseranch.com is the best. Yeah. Okay. So that's, again, if uh, if you're uh, – when you're interested and you're ready to go, uh, go to uh, thehorseranch.com. Uh, that would be Glenn Stewart's website. On there, you will find the online courses that you can involve. You'll also see his future events because I have looked. You do have a scheduler there. So when COVID does kick in. And I got to say to you, Glenn, good on you for taking the bullet and looking into this internet industry. Um, you don't have to ask us where we think it's going. I think it's pretty obvious on, on our views on how we think this internet's going to go. Uh, the thing is, whether you like it or not, people out there that are watching, you like the internet or you hate it. You'd like social media or you hate it. It's beyond if we like it or not. It's not a personal decision. It's a business decision. And that is where it is going. And good on you to get a jump on it. And I will tell you this. I think it is going to give you a head start when it opens up. I do think it's going to give you a, comp a little heads up on your competition. Um, you're building connections and connections will turn into revenues. Plus, it's a perfect example of how to use the internet to complement your business with follow-up courses, yep. education, information. I mean, it's just, it's a perfect complement to your current business. Yep. Yeah. So kudos. Good yep. job. I think, yeah, I think people just can get a little bit of a feel for you or something, you know, because, you know, I they get a little bit of a feel through, for you through this sort of thing and they yep. go, I hate the guy's mustache. I'm never going near him. Um, <laughs> or, you know, that's you know whatever so you know they get a bit of a feel for it plus it opened they go oh i never knew anything about this i never heard of that yep. before i had yep. no idea and uh, yep. yeah. I, I i'm a big believer in uh during my before i became a a call a call and supporter um <laughs> I, I used to to be suit and tie and the one thing i did learn throughout my my uh my career is they buy they buy you first, then they look at the product. If they don't like you, the product doesn't have a chance. And that's so true. And what you're doing is you're putting, you're letting them connect with you and and they will like you. Um, you are a Canada approved. I mean, you got that big stamp. Those are tough to get, believe me. And uh, <laughs> and that's, uh, and I think that's a big point is, is you, what you're doing uh, will have good effects down the road. So kudos to you. And as uh, Junior said there, good on you. Right, yeah. Paul? Well, I for sure. That, yeah. I second that for sure. So, Glenn, before we let you go, um, uh, there, is there anything else you would like to share with our audience that maybe missed or did not touch on? So, if there's stuff here you want to fill in the gaps that you think you'd like to bring up, by all means, go for it. I don't know. We covered a lot of ground. There's, yeah, there's, there's lots of uh, stories galore, but we don't need to get into any more of those. But uh, yeah, if people are wanting to. If people are wanting to improve their horsemanship and they want to, um, but one thing I, I, I'm definitely going to leave you with, I just thought of, you can leave, and I guarantee you, you cannot believe if you like horse stuff and you like, if you improve your horsemanship, the, the, the better you uh, improve your horsemanship, you cannot believe the doors that just appear and just open and um, I was told once a, one, a long time ago, take care of your horsemanship and your horsemanship will take care of you. And that is, and I didn't know what he meant at the time. I was like, what does that mean? I don't know. That sounds yeah. great. Well, that's a nice little saying. <laughs> you know, I go, oh, <laughs> 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 you 
I'll, I'll be safe, you know, and, and that maybe depending on how much you do with your horsemanship, maybe you're going to be safe. Maybe you're going to have more fun. You know, most, most people got into horses because they want to have, they want to be safe. They want to feel safe, but they want to have more fun, but it goes way beyond that. It changes actually who you are. Real true horsemanship changes who you are and it opens doors. Like I've never, like nothing I've ever done in my life. It, it's incredible what it, what it can do for you. Those are very wise uh, words, uh, very wise words to part. And I think a lot of those um, of uh, that advice, Glenn, can uh, apply to uh, a whole bunch of other things too, just in life in general is uh, bite it, take it, and go for it. Yep. Right? Okay, Colin, yep. uh, you got any, anything you want to ask our friend here, Mr. Cowboy, Mr. Uh, Horsemanology, Horsemanologist and uh, International Clinician? I had a tough, I had a tough, I had a tough time with that when I was practicing. Um, and as uh, Greg may have forgot, it's actually Constable Stewart to him. Constable uh, Stewart. Oh, yeah, he really? Have, he may have forgot that. Yes, uh, Constable Stewart. Our, I phoned him earlier. Talked to, I talked to him about his underground uh, show here, and I, I I contacted him a while back uh, to yeah. have a little visit. Uh, oh, prank call? Keep Is prank it a prank thing. call? No way! I didn't even hear about that. That's that's that how that's how that's how hurt I was. Must have been good. You're so embarrassed. <laughs> so I haven't. Yeah, he was keeping time. that a secret. First time I met Glenn, he phones me up, so I didn't have nice. him on my uh, my phone identification number. Yeah, right? so I had no who clue it was, and he comes across. And he's Constable Glenn. He's talking about our show being underground, and and uh, you know uh, they got to look into. And I'm going, holy shit, what's going on? Right. <laughs> oh, he burned me good. Perfect. Thanks, That's a Glenn. First. Thanks, good thanks, job, Glenn. Thanks, Glenn, for putting that all out. I bet you tomorrow I'm gonna have clients phoning me saying they're a constable. <laughs> yeah. So I guess it's our turn now. Uh huh. We got a punk we got, Glenn we got back. To come up with a, a Glenn prank. Yeah, we will. We will. <laughs> Just okay. Not well, a prank to you, buddy. So uh, I'd like to say uh, thank you, Glenn Stewart, uh, for coming on our show. It's been a pleasure, an honor, sure. and a privilege. Sounds excellent to me. Thank you guys for having me on. It was a, it was a good time. Excellent. Okay, Glenn. Thank you. So there you go, Junior. Wow, that, that was, was pretty a cool. Pleasure and honor to have him on the show. Yeah, he was great. I thought I thought I see that's a beautiful thing about this show with our guest and and, and uh, every guest has a niche. Yeah, and you know, too many people try to think they're experts at everything. Hey man, we're honest. We're not experts at barely anything. Yeah. We're experts at we're experts at tourism and internet. But I don't pretend to know anything. And that's why I love learning off people like Glenn Stewart, exactly. who are who have their 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 pulse on the on the horsemanship and the training and and just all out loving the horse industry is so good because I, I learned a ton tonight. I don't know about you, Junior, but I'm feeling very um I'm feeling like I might even be able to say I'm a horsemanologist pretty soon if I keep it up. You didn't even get the quarter horse joke. Uh, oh, <laughs> you're, no, you're no horse monologist. Come on. Yeah, that's true. I didn't get no, that. But what an, what an amazing, and to hear how amazing uh, his life has been, just following, excuse yeah. me, following his passion and his, his, his dreams. And I mean, good karma going there. I'm pretty stoked on the whole, uh, you know, working in the back country, 160 kilometers from oh. near civilization, herding wild horses. I mean, to me, that's yeah. cool. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, so, the experience we haven't heard. Yeah. So thank you everybody for joining us tonight. We are the Cobro hosts of the A Travel Talk Show, Greg and Colin Gerard, the brothers of tourism, the Cobro founders of A Canada Travel Dot, and the brawn, the brains and the brawn behind A Canada Marketing Group. Please support us by following our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, and Tumblr social media pages. Let me say that one more time. We are in a heavily funded uh, government tourism association. We are privately operated. Your support means a lot. And again, when you are booking travel, book local. Uh, please support us again on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, and Tumblr. You can also connect personally with us on LinkedIn. Tomorrow, you will find this interview with Mr. Glenn Stewart on our live travel community feed. And you also find it on our eight social media channels, including Facebook and YouTube and Twitter. And again, remember, Canadians, reuse, recycle, rewatch this talk show every Tuesday at 7 p.m. PST on Facebook and YouTube. It is important we recycle good Canadian content, right, Junior? Yes. 
Spread it around. Share. 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 And remember this, Canada. Share. Everyone's talking shop <laughs> local, buy local. We're saying book local. Book travel with local tourism business websites. Go directly to their websites. It is the lowest price on most of the occasions. And you can use our sites like Canadian sites like ours if you want to connect to local business websites. We need you to stop sending Canada. We need you to stop sending 13 and 18% of your booking dollars out of the country every time you book online with a corporate OTA, which is bookinghotelexpedia.com. And by the way, most of them are owned by Expedia. This money we are sending out of the country, whether you know it or not, this money that we've sent out, every time we use one of those OTAs, the 13, 18%, this was money that was once used to, to create jobs, business renovations, participate in community beautification projects, fund our local youth teams, build new ice rinks, maintain our parks, support events in our communities, put food on the tables of hardworking Canadian families. Every time you book, with an OTA like booking.com, Expedia, and hotels.com, you are helping rich billionaires buy more yachts, vacation cottages, and private islands. We're asking you to support Canadian business. Go directly to their site, book with them directly, mm -hmm. get to know them, save the 13%, put the money back in the business so, again, we can be putting the money back into our communities. Where you book makes a difference in Canadian lives. And it's very important that we all understand this message. We support local when planning and booking your travels with acantravel.com. And again, or go directly to a business website, bypass the OTAs, booking.com, hotel.com. You got to keep, we got to stop sending 13 to 18% of every booking dollar out of this country and we never see it again. None of them, not one, has ever marketed Canada back to the world. They take the money and they run. So mm. make it local. Book with Canadian travel agencies, travel websites, and book with Canadian directly with Canadian websites and save us all a big headache. You Damn can read. Yep. Go, Go ahead. ahead. You can register your business for free on acantravel.com. Yes. So, anyways, make sure you book personal. You book with the uh, individual tourism websites. Put the 13, 18% back into your communities. This is the big message mm -hmm. of the day, big message of all the 51 shows. We'd like to say again next week, our 52nd show, uh, we are bringing back a very popular guest, Mr. Jed Brown from the United Kingdom. Jed Brown operates Low Season Traveler. He's an advocate with the World Tourism uh, Association Culture and Heritage. Jed is a public speaker, author, and a big man on campus promoting off-season travel. Jed has an interesting concept on how we can rebuild tourism, how we can avoid over-tourism, and how we can build tourism back in a sustainable way. Make sure you catch us next week, Tuesday, 7 p.m. PST, here on Facebook Live and YouTube Live. And make sure you catch our guest, Jed Brown, who will be from Low Season Traveler, coming to you from the United Kingdom. This guy, you don't want to miss it. He's going to bring in a lot of good things. And let's hope. Canada's listing. So when we rebuild back tourism, we rebuild it back right, sustainably, responsibly, and effectively. So thank you very much. And again, we'd like to say thank you to our guest, Mr. Mr. Glenn Stewart, Mr. Horsemanship. And uh, it was an honor and a pleasure to have him with us. Take care, Canada. Peace out. We love you. <laughs>